I've been so excited for this one. Ah, uh, hello, beautiful bestie. It's B, and we're back with another banger. Banger, banger. So change. Think about it. If it were easy to change, all of us would probably be walking around at our absolute best. Cause like who doesn't want to be better? Change is not easy. If you have tried to change something in your life or your mindset or your habits or your body or whatever, and it's just this vicious cycle that you continue to go through, I get you. I've been there and I have really, really tried to figure out what is wrong with me. And there's actually nothing Nothing wrong with you. Your body is just trying to protect you and we'll get into that. But sometimes we have to override the manual, okay? We have to get in the driver's seat and kind of teach our mind and body that this change is a good thing. You're not crazy if you relate to what I'm saying. You are probably just human. We're gonna walk through how to actually create change. I am excited because I have yet another guide to help you through this video. Now, to be clear, <laughs> you don't have to get get the guide to get the concept. I never want you guys to feel like you are being pressured, okay? For those of you that feel what I'm saying in this video and you really wanna dig deep and get to the root cause of what could be stopping you from those changes, that's what my guide's for. It is for those who feel they want it. The last guide I did was the best year ever guide, which I am so, so excited you guys liked that one. I looked at the comments. I, I did not imagine one that so many of you would actually get the guide, but also that that it would just go beyond what I thought it could do. I knew it was going to help you, but my goodness. So this one, I've done even more with it, taking the feedback from last time of what you guys loved and tried to make that even more helpful this time around. I also wanna mention no shade to these people at all. I only had two people that sent me like complaints about the last guide and they weren't really complaints. They both said the guide wasn't long enough. So I just wanna say this up front. One thing Bestie B is never gonna do is just make a guide and give you a million pages to give you a million pages because that's what I think you guys need. It's all about value. It's not about the quantity of pages. And the funny thing about the two people who did say that, both of them didn't even start or complete the guide. So my suggestion is just give it a go. If you already pay for it and you get it, don't judge a book by its cover quite literally. See what it can do for you because I promise you, I've been very intentional and tried my very best to make this valuable for you guys. And if you do it, I know you're gonna love it. So if you wanna check out this guide to create actual change, it's in the description. Quick housekeeping, I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok. We have a lot of fun over there. Come follow me, come hang out. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can always do it for a free 99 by liking this video, by giving it a thumbs up. You can comment down below, share this video. It all helps keep my channel afloat, so. Thank you. So let's get into it. There are so many reasons why it's just really difficult to create change and lasting change at that. I feel like we can all get really hyped and get like motivated to start the change, but how long do we actually stick with it before we go back to square one? You know what I'm saying? Coming in at number one, change can be very hard because what? It forces you out of that little comfort zone that you were all cozied up in, okay? This is normal. This is a human response. And this is what I want you guys to understand because a big part of change is going to be giving yourself grace. Understanding that your body and your mind is doing what it was meant to do to literally keep you surviving, keep you alive, quite literally. Your body and your mind love predictability. You love the comfort because that is what is in our safe box. So anything outside of that, rightfully so, is going to create some level of discomfort. So if it requires you to go beyond the bounds that you're familiar with, that might not feel too good. Another thing, kind of tapping into that comfort zone, is the fear of the unknown. No. Think about it, stepping outside of your comfort zone means stepping into something you don't know what's on the other side of. You've never been there before. It requires a bit of novelty. And sometimes that can be really stressful because if you have to do something new, are you gonna be good at it? I don't know. You have to try to see. And sometimes we can't even get to that point because we're so afraid of failure or what's on the other side of that unknown. There could also be a resistance 
to change for so many reasons. I, when I was younger, had a really big problem with change. It could have been a good thing, it could have been a negative thing, but any change whatsoever really caused a lot of stress for me. I liked my little routine. And so one thing people don't know about me is that as a child, my parents got divorced, but then they got back together. But years down the road, I've realized that that created a lot of unstability within me. One minute I was with both my parents and the next minute I was going between houses and I started to develop these interesting habits that were maybe borderline OCD. At five years old, they were just like, oh, she's a little weird. But no, it was just this way that my body was trying to figure out how to feel safe. So like I compensated with some very different behaviors. Ever since then, change under any circumstance absolutely disrupts my inner peace. It can be as far back rooted into the fact that there was a really big change when I was young that I just never adjusted to. So resistance to change can be for a lot of reasons and it could go back to something way back in your childhood or it could just be other issues. But for me, I just wanted to give you that example because I know that's why change is really hard for me now. And another thing with change can be past experiences. So maybe if you had made a change or maybe you had a change that you didn't want to make and you were forced to make. Kind of like my experience as a child with my parents getting divorced that kind of caused this turbulence. Sometimes those experiences with change just leave a bad taste in your mouth about all changes. In the guide also, how do we rewire our perspective on change? How can we recreate that narrative and make it work in our favor? Okay, and lack of motivation. This is a really common one. I went to a Tony Robbins conference. One thing that they talked about there was change. Change. Tony used a really interesting example where he said he was helping a client who was addicted to cigarettes and she was like, I just can't stop. There's nothing I can do to stop. Now this woman had two kids and Tony, being Tony Robbins, said, if I told you that I'm gonna come to your house and if you don't stop smoking cigarettes, I'm gonna kill both your children. I know this is dark. You're telling me you couldn't stop smoking cigarettes. And she of course was like, well, Basically, what he was trying to show was that the motivation for her just wasn't enough. She didn't have the motivation in her life at that time. He used the word leverage. We have to find enough leverage in our life to get us to go ahead and actually make the change. We can call that leverage or motivation. You might hear me interchange it throughout this video, but that is gonna be a big puzzle piece. And that's something in the guide that I really work hard on you guys figuring out what is your leverage? What is your motivation? How can we find what's going to move you to become this different person or this different version of yourself or to break this habit or to develop a new habit? What's the leverage got to be for you? So that's what I kind of help you with in the guide too. Another thing can be lack of support. Now, I don't want to harp too hard on this because one thing with change is that I believe and that we'll talk about is accountability too. Yes, you can have people in your life to support you, but at the end of the day, I have seen so many people who want to make change have nothing but unconditional support and resources and still not make the change. So I don't necessarily believe that this is a huge factor, but I know for some people it's going to be a reason or it's going to be an excuse, let's be honest. So support is always going to help you out, but it's not the driving factor. So let's get into how to actually create real change. First and foremost, we can't create change if we can't define the change. A lot of us may know that we're not happy where we are or there's something that we want to stop doing, but we have to get overly specific about what it is we want to change. In the guide, there is space for you to clearly define this and be so incredibly descriptive about what is going on in your current situation that has got to change. Once you have overly specified what this change needs to be, then we walk through this interesting visualization that might make some of you really uncomfortable, but hey, comfort didn't get us anywhere, right? We gotta step out of the comfort zone. So I have an exercise in the guide where you're gonna do two visualizations. You are going to write out what your life looks like in five years if you choose to not change. How is that gonna make you feel? How is that gonna affect your relationships? How is that gonna affect your self-perception? 
question. From that prompt, what you're gonna do is define what are the consequences of not making this change. This was so incredibly powerful for me to do on my own because I realized I had never thought about what is this gonna do if I continue to do it every day for the next five years? Because oftentimes with the bad habits that we have, it's just a daily thing. It's an innate thing that we do every single day. We don't think of the longevity. We think of how we feel in this moment about the habit or the thing that we don't like. When you put your mind in this place of seeing the damage it's going to do over time, you know, maybe today you don't think it's a big deal, but if you multiply that times 365 times five more years, well, that's a lot of little things that are gonna add up to something astronomical. So really for me, that exercise put things into perspective and it really made me uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie. It brings up some pretty nasty feelings, but that's what goes into the prompt as well. How are you gonna feel in five years if this becomes your truth? Be so incredibly honest with yourself. It's uncomfortable, I know. But then you get to do something a little fun in the guide. And from there, you get to do the complete opposite. You get to picture now, what is it gonna look like on the other side? If you do make the change in five years, what does that look like? There's also a prompt that's gonna ask you, what will the rewards be for you making this change? Sometimes this is what helps create leverage. That's what I'm trying to do with this guide is help you find your leverage. Sometimes it's as easy as just kind of picking your brain and making you see things in a different light. I can tell you, cigarettes are bad. But what if I told you, in five years, this would happen to your lungs and then XYZ happens, it's gonna cost you this much in the hospital and you've got two young kids, what are they gonna do? If you actually think of real consequences, realistic consequences that could happen, it kind of helps you understand a little bit more. We're also gonna get into what is currently holding you back from creating change. So this is something you wanna think about. Look at your habits, look at your current habits and see how you're promoting a change to happen and how you're stopping the change to happen. So we go through all that in the guide. Also, we go over beliefs. You know, beliefs are so important because every change starts here before it actually manifests into the world or through your body or whatever it is that you wanna do. It has to be this mind thing first and foremost. Writing down the beliefs that you have currently about yourself. Like I always use fitness as an example because I think a lot of people can relate to it, but take it with a grain of salt. So with fitness, it's kind of easy to look at, okay, what are the habits I'm doing right now? Like, how am I fueling myself? How do I move my body? You can see that on paper and you can also write down your belief system. If weight loss was a goal for you, is losing weight hard? Well, that's a belief that you have. It doesn't necessarily have to mean it's a good or bad belief, but you're gonna write all your current beliefs down and what could possibly be holding back and be brutally honest with yourself. That's the thing about doing this whole exercise is if you are going to lie to yourself, don't bother trying, don't, don't don't buy the guy, like I'm telling you right now, don't buy it because you have to be so willing to go there. And that means like if it was with fitness, how do you perceive yourself right now? Do you even like yourself? What is it that you don't like about yourself? Do you not see your self-worth? What are all your beliefs about yourself? Because we have to get to the core of where you truly are right now or else we can't fix it. Then from there, we're able to go on the next page and write down what the opposite habits of all those habits would be. If right now, for example, which is something I really did, I was a big takeout girly, like every day last year, like put on 20 pounds last year. So that was a habit that I was doing that was really not helping me reach my fitness goals. And so the opposite of that obviously would be more home cooked meals. So creating the opposite really helped me see what I could actually do to get to where I wanna be. But from there also tweak it to be realistic because I don't wanna say I'm never gonna go out to eat again, no but at least I can compromise with myself and say, okay, Fridays we do take out, right? We go out with friends, stuff like that. So it just helps you kind of see where's point A, where's point Z, and can I find something realistic, maybe not in the middle, but closer to Z to get me to my goal until I can actually do the whole thing or make the full change. So once you've outlined your current habits, the habits that you need to have in place, your current beliefs, and the beliefs that we need to start creating, now you kind of have a map. 
of where we are and where we need to get. So once we're there, then comes the work. We are now going to create an incredible plan of action for you. And here's the thing, Best EB can't make it. You have to make it for yourself, but I can help you formulate it. And the way that it's gotta be formulated is not, you're not gonna overnight make this change because that is going to probably bring you right back to square one. You wanna create small, digestible steps. It might take some time, but real change does not happen overnight. You see it all the time. The fitness example, people love to go from zero to 100 when it comes to nutrition. Like I'm only gonna eat leaves. Not understanding that that drastic change may be going from the fast food to just all leaves. That's why you're having such difficulty and you're gonna end up right where you are. But also, is that really the kind of change you wanna make? Ensuring that your end goal is truly feasible and something that will sustain you is really important. Obviously eating leaves for the rest of your life is not sustainable. So why people ever made that a goal in the first place is beyond me. But what is feasible is a balanced lifestyle full of nutritional foods. Things like that should be your end goal. Something realistic. If you can't see yourself doing it for the next 50 years, it's probably not a healthy change. We also need to ask the question, what are the triggers in your life? So if we were talking about the cigarette example, in what moments are you reaching for that cigarette? Obviously, for a lot of people, stress is the culprit, okay? Usually, you don't just become addicted to something without like kind of a reason behind it. Once we know our triggers around certain issues, now is the time where we need to figure out sustainable habits to replace that. For example, with food, a trigger for me is not having time. Feeling like I just looked at my watch, I haven't had anything and I'm starving now out of nowhere, so my best bet is to DoorDash or whatever. That has always been a really big trigger for me. So one thing I started to do was just have more options in place. So buying meal preps or having even like sandwich stuff just available because I would rather make a PB&J than order the takeout. Stuff like that, having more preventative things in place so that when I get triggered, I don't have to make the decision I don't wanna make. And keep in mind, everything at the end of the day is a choice, but when we have the resources and tools in place to help us, the choice is a lot easier because trust me, I get it. What preventative steps can you take? What are your triggers? How can you be ready to not make the decision that's going to fuel the bad habit? How can you actually make the lasting change? Because when you think about it, if you continue to put yourself in the same situation with the same setup, you're probably gonna make the same choice. You have to change your environment, you have to change your resources, and that will help you change, period. The easy part is actually making the change, the hard part is actually doing the work up here and creating it in your reality. That's the hard part. On the note of triggers, sometimes it's not necessarily like a stress trigger. Sometimes it's self-sabotage, where you know a good thing is happening for yourself and you go out of your way to ruin it. And you don't even know why. There were so many times where I was just like so proud of my fitness journey. I'm starting to see like muscles pop up. I would be like, oh, that means I'm doing really good. Let's get a whole pizza. I would then sabotage myself for no reason. Like, why am I doing that? And there is a reason for that actually. It's because subconsciously, deep down, you want to stay in that same spot. That change on the other side, it's kind of freaking you out. And I realized for myself, what I was afraid of when it came to actually having fitness goals was how am I gonna maintain this? I can't maintain this, this is a lot of work. I don't see myself as worthy of having this dream body. I've never had this dream body. Why would I think I could have this now? I made all these things up in my head that weren't true, but they were excuses to keep me in that comfort zone. Seeing the progress actually made me wanna take five steps back. Like, what's the logic in that? It's that I haven't done enough work to convince myself I deserve to achieve my goals. I deserve to be comfortable in my body. I deserve to be confident. I deserve to feel energetic. I deserve to have a physique that makes me feel healthy. And I kept telling myself, no, I don't. And maybe you've done something similar where you see something's going good and then you go doing something like completely left field and you know it's not gonna serve you at all. So I got stuck in that habit of seeing a little progress, go back and now for a week I'm off track. Now for a week I'm on track 
track. Now for a week I'm off track. And it's just this cycle that I never get past because it was all a mind game. It was never going to work out for me until I really got to the root of my self-worth and self-confidence issues. It was never gonna work until I broke down the belief system that I had around what it would be like to have what I really wanted. I had to create that truth for myself. I had to unlearn the things that I've been taught through society, TikTok, my family. I had to create my own truth for myself. And that's really hard to do because then you kind of feel crazy. Like, am I right? Am I wrong? But the truth is what you make it. So knowing that there might be moments where you actually see change occurring, how can you be prepared to actually let it happen and not jump in the way of it? Because self-sabotage is so common, but we are not going to self-sabotage. A big portion of the guide is working through discomfort. With change comes discomfort. That is probably the reason why so many of us can't stick with change. There are several exercises that are going to help you work through this, but one of the things I find important is changing your perspective around discomfort in general. Getting insanely excited when you feel discomfort and leaning into that because the thing you have to remind yourself with change and discomfort is that it is temporary. Remember I told you earlier in the video that your brain and your body are going to want you to stay where you are because that's what we know that's safe. We don't know what's on the other side of this. Your primitive instincts are asking you, is this going to kill you? So you have to kind of go beyond those instincts and that urge to back away from the discomfort and understand that as you continue to show up and build that habit, you will be training yourself to understand that you are safe. Safety is a big piece of getting through discomfort, but the more you back away, the harder it is. The more that you show up, the more you are teaching yourself, this is a safe experience. I can relax a little bit. And that could take time. Repetition is absolute key. When I got my new car, I didn't drive it for a little while. Yeah, because I freaked out. I was not used to having something nice. My brain told me, you cannot drive this car, girl. You are going to get yourself in trouble. That was my change, okay? And I told you, I just don't do good with change. But I had to force myself to drive that car. That is probably the goofiest thing some of you have ever heard because it's like, wow, you got a new car and you couldn't drive it. Yes, I had a new car and I couldn't drive it because I had a lot of issues with accepting something really nice. I had never bought myself something nice like that. And it did not go over well. It was a whole thing. I started having panic attacks. I was not expecting that at all. But I'm trying to explain to you that my mind thought that this Changed too much and I was just not safe. But the more that I would just get in the car, I was teaching myself, this is fine. You're not gonna die, Bria. The more I showed up, the easier it got. Now I am whipping that thing. AJ makes fun of me because he's like, are you Batman? The way I take these turns, I'm not promoting that, but listen. I got a lead foot, okay? So consistency, it's really important through your change. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. Progress is not linear. Be kind to yourself and understand that repetition builds comfort. This uncomfortable feeling is temporary. It's not gonna last you. The longer we stick with it, the quicker we are gonna get through it. But some people would rather live in dissatisfaction because it doesn't require them to experience discomfort because they understand the predictability of that dissatisfaction. But to me, dissatisfaction and discomfort, if I have to look at the two, I would much rather discomfort because that's temporary. Dissatisfaction over time leads to unfulfillment. And I don't wanna look back on my life and be unfulfilled because I wasn't willing to step out of my comfort zone for a hot minute. Baby, bring the heat. Let's do it. In the moments that you do experience discomfort, what I want you to do is create a plan so that when you get uncomfortable or when you get triggered, you have a system in place for what you're going to do. I'm gonna give you an example, a personal experience that I am still getting better with slowly, but sugar was a really big problem for me. And it was like, I was checking all my boxes, but then I would get stressed out and I would be like, let's go to sprinkles, let's get a milkshake. That was my drug of choice. I get it from my dad. We got sweet tooths and I got cavities. So I had to create a plan and I started doing this this summer and baby, the waste started to waste when I did. What I did was I started to to keep my favorite fruits in this house at every given point. Watermelon, pineapple, like mangoes, everything that I love, I kept it 
on deck. So that if I got the urge to go get that milkshake, first thing I would do is drink a glass of water because a lot of the time I'm just a dehydrated bitch. Second thing I would do if I'm still feeling like I need some sugar, I would go for the fruit. I would have as much as I want. And the crazy thing is, when I would do that, I would not still want the milkshake. But if I didn't have the fruit in the house, you bet I was booking it to in and out to get myself a cookies and cream milkshake. Yes, I was because I wasn't having a preventative plan in place. So create your preventative plan for discomfort so that when it hits you, you do not become a victim to it again. You can break the habit. You can break the cycle. You can make the change. And yes, are there days where I don't have fruit in my house? Yes. Are there days when I get a pint of ice cream? Yes, absolutely. But there are more days where I'm doing better. I am never gonna be perfect. Progress, like I said, is not linear. But if I look at myself this year versus last year, hunty, the difference is incredible because last year I had some terrible habits in place that later started to affect me on a mental level and emotional level. You guys saw how I was at the beginning of the year where I was just really struggling with my mental health. A big piece of that was my habits behind the scene weren't great and the sugar, it was doing it for me. And I got to the point where I was just so tired of it. I need to be better to myself, not just because I wanna look a certain way, but because I wanna feel better. I want to be happy, I deserve happiness. I deserve to respect my body more than what I'm doing right now. I'm not treating myself with kindness. I'm not treating myself with love. That's when the breakthrough happened. That's where the prompts come in in the guide though, where we're trying to get to like, what is the real issue here? Because there were multiple times where I tried to stop doing these things, but I kept self-sabotaging myself. And when I finally got real with myself and said, I don't think I deserve X, Y, and Z. I don't feel like I should be a happy person. Like I feel like I don't deserve happiness. When I got to that reason, that's when the breakthrough happened. And that's when I could actually start to create different beliefs in my head and create a different truth because I was not rocking with that other narrative. So having my plan for those moments really, really helped me to show up for myself and be more consistent. And the more I did it, the better I got at it. And now it's become so much easier for me to make a better decision for myself, to choose to energize myself, to choose to nourish myself. Do I still have fun? Yes, but a majority of the time I understand that what I'm doing is loving my body through nutrition. And that's what's helped me make the lasting change. Another important piece of creating change is tracking your progress. Now, I don't mean doing something that's unhealthy. Like, I know we're using fitness, so I'm not saying weigh yourself. You cannot fix what you don't measure. So think of this change from a business standpoint. You can't make adjustments if you don't look at your analytics. I use YouTube as an example for this. I'm like a little nerd when it comes to analytics. I try to figure out what's working on my channel, what's not working on my channel. How can I change this? How can I better accommodate to make you guys happy? How can I make content that I like? You know, all the things. And it's like a little puzzle for me. I like doing that. So, but if I just neglect my analytics, I can't continue to make my channel better. So sometimes it takes me sitting down and looking at the numbers and it can be really uncomfortable sometimes because numbers ebb and flow, especially as a creator. But you have to be honest with yourself. And if you don't take the time to look, you can't fix anything. I'm saying look at the reality of the situation. Delusion is cool sometimes. You guys know I love some healthy delusion, but in this case, I want you to be so incredibly logical because logic is important too. Let's look at what is working, what is not working, and how can we adjust. Continue to track that progress. And also, it's nice to track progress because you also see that you you are making changes. This really applies to fitness because my fitness journey has been so slow where I'm like, am I even making changes? But bestie, I took pictures three months ago when I first started to now, it's totally different. And I'm gonna share that with you one day, but this isn't the video where that matters. I'm just saying those pictures have been such a saving grace because there have been points when I'm like, why am I doing this? I was ready to sabotage it all. And then I pulled up my pictures and I was like, oh my God, she's moving. She's moving slowly, but she's moving. And I don't care how slow your progress is. Progress is progress. And we are going to track that so that you can remind yourself that this is not for nothing. So you have to figure out how does that look? How can you track your progress? In the guide, I have habit trackers for you. So if you want to create a list and then check off the days that you're doing it, and then at the end of 30 days, see how many boxes you checked out of 30 just to see what your consistency is. And then keep doing that. The thing that's cool about your digital guide is you can 
print off as many pages as you want if you run out. So if you run out of the habit tracker pages, you can just select those and print more of them out. And I also recommend that you have like a little notebook where you can take your own notes so you can just have more space to write your thoughts out. And last but not least, you guys, I need you to give yourself grace. I know this is just like something we hear so much, but you cannot hate yourself into change. You cannot berate yourself to change. You need to see yourself as a deserving being, someone who deserves this change because this change will make you an all around better person. Practice kindness with yourself. I'm the first one to tell you that I have been very hard on myself, more so at the beginning of this year. I think it contributed a lot to this mental health stuff I was talking about. But what I realized is it is completely damaging to speak to yourself in such an unloving way when you wanna create a lasting change. If you make a mistake or if something doesn't go perfect on your journey, that is not the opportunity to just hate on yourself. It's an opportunity to actually love yourself into changing. Think of who you were as a child. Would you speak to that child that way? I hope not. Your inner child, believe it or not, is probably what's driving a lot of your current habits. So if you can love on yourself, if you can love on your inner child, you'll also be healing yourself. Even if it doesn't feel like it, you're gonna be healing yourself. And the more that you can heal yourself, the more you can teach yourself that you're safe now, that this change is really healthy. Because think about it, when you're trying to create change, but you reinforce it by being mean to yourself, being hateful to yourself, you're reinforcing that the change is scary. It's bad. If I don't make this change, it's bad. No, let's take some pressure off the change. This might be the most important piece, guys, because you will continue to go through this loop if you try to berate yourself. We ain't doing that. We're coming from love, and when you can honestly come from a place of like, wow, I'm gonna do this because I love myself so much, I promise you it's so easy to stick with. I promise you, rather than I fucking hate myself. Why can't you just do it? Has that ever worked for anybody? If you've ever been spoken to that way, has that worked for you? No, take it down a notch, okay? It's gonna be okay, it really is. You can do this, I'm so excited for you. I want you guys to have this one, particularly before the new year, because I know everybody's getting ready for the changes, changes, 2024, we're gonna make changes, right? Yes, but we're gonna do it in a healthy way, and we're gonna give ourselves all the time we need. Like, don't put a massive deadline on yourself, like, I have to do this by this time. No, actually do the work, and the work might take a little longer than you'd like, but I want you to strip time away because we live in a society of instant gratification where you get your Amazon Prime on your door tomorrow, you get your DoorDash in 30 minutes. So when people actually make changes, they think it needs to happen overnight. That's not gonna happen, sorry. But I love you guys, and I really want you to have a fulfilling, satisfying life. Whatever change you have the desire to make, you are absolutely worthy of. It's going to happen for you. Give yourself enough time, give yourself enough grace, but actually be willing to dig deep and make real change. And don't forget, you guys, the journey to change is beautiful. Enjoy the journey. Don't just keep your eye on the prize. Be in the moment, enjoy the journey. The journey is the best part. Someone had this really good example that just really stuck with me. They're like, yeah, well you could climb a mountain or you could fly a helicopter to the top of the mountain. But more people want to climb the mountain because of the journey, right? The journey is always the best part. In any milestone that I've ever met, that is the best part. So please don't forget to just enjoy every moment of this journey to your change. Again, if you would like a little assistance in your journey to making a real sustainable change, the guide for change is in the description. There are so many prompts in there to help you along the way to kind of get your brain thinking about these things. Of course, you can always message me if you have questions. But yeah, it's there for you to check out. Comment down below what changes you would like to make in the new year. Maybe we can help each other get motivated, get started, maybe find a buddy down there that you can link up with and make changes with. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I cannot wait for you guys to tell me about all the changes you're gonna be making. I love you guys. I'll see you next week.